Hey everybody, this is Kylie Joe from the Nick Smith Podcast. I just wanna tell you this week's episode is coming out and it is all about FOMO. Yes, the fear of missing out and comparison and a whole bunch of other stuff that I know you are going to want to eat up. So please watch this episode, share it with somebody that you know needs to hear it and be blessed. Hey, we are your hosts, Nick Smith and Kylie Joe Smith. And today we are talking about distraction. We are. We're continuing. Specifically, what is it? Huh? Huh? What? A distraction? Distraction. <laughs> <laughs> distraction. We're taking the traction away from this. Um, no, specifically, we're talking about the fear of missing out as well as comparison. Mm. But before yeah. we do that, you know who doesn't miss out? Our inner circle. It's true. Inner circle, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? They may get distracted. But they don't miss out. They don't miss out. Opportunities. And there. if you want to be a part of the inner circle, mm-hmm. it is only $2 a month $2. at the very minimum. Minimum. Now, you could, if you got 500 a month. Hey. Why I'm not? Like, if you're like, you know what? I, I think. You know, I got an extra G ball a month I want to give away. So I'm going to. G ball is. $1,000. We don't. Oh, okay. All right. Well, G that's fine. I'm like, we don't need any of that. <laughs> but uh, if you want to join the inner circle, you can just go to <laughs> patreon.com slash Nick Smith podcast. We appreciate you. We, we sure will uh, send you a little thank you. And you we just appreciate all of our inner circle from all around the world. You all are amazing. Um, you're one of the like huge reasons that we still do this. It's true. So thank you. Well, let's get into it. All right. All right. So, uh, last week, uh, we started actually a few weeks ago, we started this, this conversation about focus, um, mostly from selfish ambition of mm-hmm. like, I need to not focus on the wrong things mm-hmm. and I need to make sure that I'm not being distracted. And so I was like, you know, the best way to teach something, learn it yourself. <laughs> and so, uh, we, we talked a little bit about what causes distraction. And so we talked about um, dissatisfaction mm-hmm. about a uh, lack of interest, a lack mm-hmm. of defined expectations. Yep. Um, no motivation. Yeah. And also looking at the difference between attention deficit mm-hmm. and a lack of focus. So like you can actually have a lack of attention, which is different than not being able to focus. I know that's, I know it's like, wait, what? Just, but if like, you don't know what we're talking about, go back and watch the you episode. You gotta watch the episode. You gotta, it's you gotta good actually. stuff. Or and then like it. when we have that feeling of like starting a task, and we're like, yes, I'm going to do this. And then you realize what it actually entails. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another type of losing focus because it's like, oh, were you focused on the thing or were you focused on the ease of getting the thing? So yeah. watch the episode. It's really good. It's good stuff. There's a link somewhere. Right. somewhere. Like and we here, need to talk about this other side of um, being unfocused, which is FOMO. FOMO. And no, we're not cussing at you. <laughs> We did not say mofo. Don't, we don't said at FOMO. us. Don't get in the comments. Be like, uh, what did you say? <laughs> I thought you were Christians. <laughs> FOMO is simply the fear of missing out. If you didn't know that, uh, drop us a comment. You can start using that now. <laughs> you can start using that phrase. So we actually, working with um, young people, uh, I found myself often asking our students, like, do you have FOMO? Like, what is your deal? And they didn't even know what it was. And I was thinking, like, oh, this is a, like a hip thing to say. No. FOMO. It's not. Hip. Apparently. It's saying hip, hip isn't hip anymore. You can't say hip unless you're talking about the it's body the part. It's the new keen way to say stuff. <laughs> hip. Hey, keen. cool cats. Let's talk about FOMO. Quite stellar, if you ask me. <laughs> anyway, FOMO is the fear of missing out. And you might be thinking, like, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. Like, I don't, I'm not afraid of missing out on stuff. But there are a few signs that you may not realize. You actually have FOMO. What are you yeah, laughing at? I'm just cracking up at your delivery. It was very like, <laughs> like clickbaitish. Like, <laughs> do you have FOMO? Find out here. Click this link. Watch till the end to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the end. Wait till the end. Um, all right. So what are some, some ways that you can know if you're, you have this fear of missing out? Well, if you always have to be in the know, like you always have to know the details, even if you are not actually involved. This is like a big deal. Like it's one thing to be involved in a project and you have a certain level of information you need to know. Mm -hmm. But if you're not even in it, like you're not even in the room and you're like, what are they doing? What's going on over there? How come they're doing that? Yeah. I think what uh, my lovely wife is kindly saying is if you nosy, probably because you got FOMO. Like if you're, if you suffer from nositis, if you are <laughs> nosiosity, nosiosity of being, um, in everybody's business, everybody is part of it's your more life. Than everybody. 
Yeah, that's, that includes extra people. Everybody plus some more. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> um, then you you probably have this fear of missing out. If you, um, if you get irritated when you're in a group talking Ooh. to people and they're talking about stuff and you're like, wait, what? I didn't know about that. What happened? And you start like, like getting defensive and like mm -hmm. taking it personally when you mm. don't know about something that's happening yep. in someone else's life yep. that ain't even about you. Um, you're probably dealing with this fear of missing out. Yeah. 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 And also if you spend too much time, like we'll say like researching, but it's really like Facebook or social media stalking mm -hmm. and trolling. You, it, it, trolling is a big sign that you have FOMO. Yeah. You're like, and it, you don't have to be trolling in the sense of like actually commenting on something, mm -hmm. but like you have that sense of maybe superiority or like, well, just because they're doing that. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just because they put it on Facebook doesn't mean it's a good thing. It's like, whoa, like you're not even in their life. They, when they posted that, they weren't even thinking of you. Well, hopefully. You weren't part of that. You and yet, not part of that. for some reason here we are and you, you're, you missed out and you're upset. Well, and a more positive side of it, um, mm -hmm. of FOMO. I say positive. It, it's really negative, but it's it's not as negative as what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Is overextending yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of times we overextend ourselves. We say yes to way too many things mm -hmm. because we don't want to miss an opportunity that's been being presented. Yep. Or if you know you want to go the the more um, um, I guess negative side of that, you don't want another opportunity to go to someone else. Come because on. Because you're like, wait a second, uh, I I can do this. I can do this and this and this and this. But really, it's not that you can do it. It's just that you don't, you don't want, want that opportunity to have, to have yeah, access. Mm. Other people have access to that opportunity. Interesting. And it's because you're afraid. You're afraid that someone else is going to get more than you. You're afraid of um, losing in mm. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, I, feel, I feel that fear of missing out comes from uh, this idea of loss. Like, yeah. for some reason, uh, something's happened in your life and you're dealing with loss and you don't want to experience that again. And so you're doing all that you can to to hoard experiences or to hoard information so that you're not left out so that you don't feel abandoned or lost or mm. um that you don't experience loss wow you know what I mean that emotional feeling of loss yeah that's interesting that's <clears throat> that's a little deep for some people and by some people I mean me a little deep <laughs> you're getting a little deep faster well you got to get into it though well yeah and that's a really great point like even what you brought up about you know the fear of of um someone else getting what you want mm-hmm I think we Even have to you don't want it. Yeah, we have to define what you're missing out on. Like it's not just the fear of missing out on the experience. For some people yeah. the the fear of missing out on accolades, the mm -hmm. fear of missing out on being seen as important or valued or talented or gifted um or capable. Like the fear is not just the experience. Yes. Like I don't just have I mean it's it's natural and normal to like you see, you know, um I remember like friends that I had in high school went on vacations to places that I'd mm -hmm. never been. And it was like, Oh wow. Like you have that feeling of like, I really wish I could go to that place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, maybe that's a FOMO of going to that place, but it's different when you're like, Oh man, I wanted to get the stuff that they got. You know, I want yeah. that you're, you're have the fear of missing out on possessions or the fear of missing out on, you know, the, the feeling that you would get having those things. And it's different for each person. It's not always about the experience. And so like what you said about like the fear of, of um, losing something. Yeah. And I think about the garden and how like when we look at Eve in that moment where she's being presented with a lie mm -hmm. and she has the opportunity to either reject the lie or accept it and then allow that to determine her next decision. Um, she had a fear of missing out. Like she was presented with FOMO. Like God, wait, God didn't tell you. Yeah. You didn't know? Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. You're yeah. missing out on something over here. Like this is, everybody else knows about this and you don't. Well, and I've experienced people trying to like, cause people will use your, your FOMO against you. Mm -hmm. Um, especially people like when it comes to gossip, um, Oof. I remember someone coming to me at one point and being like, man, I, I feel so bad about what these people said about you. Oh, did you not hear? Did you not hear what they said? <laughs> and it's this idea of like, well, I want to know. I want to know what they said. You know, what, what's everybody saying? And I remember the comment. Mm. It was a person that wasn't in my life and the comment wouldn't have mattered no matter what they said anyway. And so I remember having that thought of like, I, I really don't care. Like, mm -hmm. nope, didn't hear it, but you heard it. I hope it entertains you. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Yeah. Um, the way they feel has nothing to do with me. Mm. Um, but mm. people will like buy into that. And you have to, uh, what you said earlier about, you have to ask yourself, like, what is it you're actually missing out on? Mm -hmm. There are times with, um, like with jobs, I remember when I was just working job to job, two and three jobs at a time, 
I remember I would always keep my eyes open for like now hiring. And mm-hmm. I remember coming home being like, oh, babe, this job's hiring. And you'd be like, do you want to work there? <laughs> like, you, do you have jobs. Are you, do you want to work at, you know, this corner store? Like, why are you bringing up this other job? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that I wanted to work there. It was just like, there's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. I can take it because well, it's yeah. there. And the fear of, of losing provision. I mean, I think yeah. in a job market when you work, and this isn't putting down like, because the types of jobs you worked were were like those, um, like labor jobs service. or like yeah, service, jobs. service jobs. There's a lot of those jobs that aren't necessarily stable for long periods of time. Yeah. So there's an understanding when you work those jobs a lot of times that, well, I'm working this until something better comes along. Yeah. And, and always looking for that better. Yeah. And so like you, you might have the fear of missing out on the provision or the promotion that would propel you to that next level that you're trying to get to. And so the yeah. FOMO isn't necessarily like, oh man, there's all these jobs and I'm not going to get to have these jobs if I don't apply. It's like, okay, wh- well, maybe that job pays more. Mm-hmm. Maybe that job has better hours. Yeah. Maybe that job allows me to have more time with my family. Like it's, it's different depending on the thing you're looking at as well. Yeah. Which, well, we'll get, we'll get into the, the why and mm-hmm, the how to overcome mm-hmm. that in a little bit, but um, we've kind of touched on a little bit, but going with FOMO is that comparison piece Mm -hmm. because the fear of missing out isn't just, I don't want to miss out for me, but it's like, I don't want to miss out um, what other people are experiencing Mm -hmm. because missing out, you have to have a comparison. You have to have a a baseline, something that you're like, oh, well they did this and I'm missing that. Mm. And so that FOMO um, distraction, which really what it is because you're, you're not focused on the thing you're supposed to do. Um, You're focused on what other people have already experienced and you don't want to miss out on that. Yeah. Um, it leads us so deeply into comparison so that we're, we're comparing our journey to other people's journeys. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've talked about it before and, and it's just not helpful. Yeah. Like, there's nothing good that comes from um, spending your time and energy measuring up against other people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't do well. It doesn't, doesn't help. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's like you're using um, others as an object in that sense you're objectifying a person um seeing their circumstances as a measuring stick for your success yeah that's good and instead of saying and i think there's a healthy comparison sometimes when we're talking about like humility we want to always keep that view of christ um as as Mm -hmm. believers it's like well i'm i'm never like i can't view myself so highly that i'm like yeah i'm (laughs) <laughs> I'm flawless. Like nothing, there's nothing wrong with anything I do or Haven't say since 1974. Exactly. Like we always have to keep that healthy view of the cross and remember yeah. like we, we don't not comparing ourselves to Jesus, like <laughs> in a degrading way, but just like, all right though, like I'm trying to be Christ like, but I can't put myself in the position of being God. Yes. Um, That's but good. when it comes to other people, there's really not, um, I mean, even Paul like discouraged people, like, like, It wasn't this like, hey, look how great I am and try to be like me. Like it was always pointing to Jesus. He does say imitate me as I imitate Christ. As I imitate Christ. But he didn't say compare the way you do your things to the way I do things. Right. Like, and so we we have to take that, uh, that focus off of other people and put it like, even what you're saying, like, look, one thing you said before, look where you want to go. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and where you want to go should never be someone else's shoes. Come on now. That's the big one. Like I want to be, you can have mentors and you should have people that you look up to role models. Yeah. They should be role models, not just because of the things they've accomplished, but because of the character they exude. Yeah. So like, Oh, I really admire the way this person has integrity. I admire this person's like grace and poise. I admire their, you know, their just commitment to knowledge and, and growing as a student. It should never be like, oh, wow, I really want to have the same car as them. <laughs> like, I really, really want, like, and it's hard because the world we live in is so, it's so tangible based. Like, I want yeah, so to, materialistic. Wanna, yeah, it's materialistic. So, um, but looking where you want to go, like not whose shoes you want to fill. Yeah. But what journey, like what, what's that destination for you? Yes. And understanding that whatever that is, whatever God has planted in your heart as your goal or your career focus that it is the best thing for you. Like it, that thing that God has planted in you to do Mm -hmm. is the best thing for you to pursue. Mm. And you should pursue it with everything you have, all that energy that God has given you for that thing, which should keep you from like having that view of like, Oh, Oh wait, but hold on. They're going faster than me. And they want to do the same career as me. I don't like it. I don't want it. No, I need, I need to have the thing they have. It's like, Nope, this path that you are on, it is perfect for you. Yeah. And I think that idea of look where you want to go, where we got it from, I think it's important for you to know that uh, listening and, and watching right now, 
um, when you're driving, have you ever noticed like if, if there's a something like, I don't know, you're passing by some cows or something, or you see a, a beautiful house on your left and you're looking and all of a sudden you start, mm, yeah, you yeah, either start yeah. veering that way or in your mind, you're like, oh, I don't want to veer that way. So you start overcorrecting yep. and you start veering off the other way um, because where you look and the direction you go, like the way your body mm-hmm. moves um, mm-hmm. are connected because your vision, like that's just how it works. Yeah. And so if you're looking, even in the, the abstract, you're looking in the business sense where you want to go. You're looking in the relational sense where you want to go. You're looking, however it is, um, if you're looking in the direction of healing and wholeness and and um health you know mm-hmm. what i mean if you're looking that direction then you're going to make choices to head that direction yeah as opposed to if your view is obscured by distraction by mm-hmm. comparison by fear of missing out then you're you're going to meander you know what yeah. i mean you're going to wind you're not going to go straight the direction you want to be yeah well and it's interesting i think sometimes you may have noticed this or experienced it the more you compare yourself to others and you start to have that mindset of like well i don't want other people to get what i want mhm have you ever experienced that then all of a sudden you see more of people getting what you're going after? Yeah. Maybe it's because what you're going after is so great that it's, it's a worthy cause. Like that, that thing that you're after is like, wow, that yes, you should be pursuing that. But the more you start to fix, it's just like when you're, when you go shopping for a car mm-hmm. and you're like looking at a certain type of car or even a house. I remember every time we were looking at houses or like trying to find a new, like a, in a new city, looking at places to live all of a sudden you start seeing for sale signs mm-hmm. for rent. Signs, all for of a sudden you start signs. seeing that car. You start seeing maybe ads for that car. Cause now your mind is aware of it. Maybe it's not that people are just getting ahead of you all the time. Maybe because you're so hyper-focused on other people and comparing yourself to them that you're noticing it more. Yeah. You're noticing their successes more because you're looking for their successes more. When you start noticing and looking for your own success and overcoming your own obstacles, that's what you start to be more aware so of. Good. And so like that, yeah. that I think is, is a huge weapon against that comparison. But I know there are, there's more people that need to hear this. Like oh, besides yeah. just you and us. Come on now. Don't be selfish. And don't have the fear of missing out. I don't want anybody else hearing this. <laughs> like, like have the fear of missing out for them. Mm, you don't want them to miss good. out. That's you good. know what I mean? Ooh, that's so, a good one. So I like send that. this to someone, wh- whoever you're thinking of right now. Cause wait, give that person that you just thought of, send this to them Yes, because they need to know about this episode and the next podcast. But yeah. one of the things that I was going to touch on earlier when we were talking about um, <laughs> your path um, was trust. A lot of, mm. a lot of the comparison and distraction comes from a lack of trust. Okay. Um, and so for us believers, like we have to trust that God loves us and that he has his best for us. And when you don't trust that, that's when you start to look around and say, oh, well, but they're, but God, they're doing better. But, mm. but Lord, I, do you see how they're prospering? Do you see how, because you don't trust that God's best is for you. You don't trust that um, his sovereign plan is over your life. You don't yeah. trust that he is equipping you to overcome so that you can become the best version of yourself Come on. that is possible through his grace. Mm-hmm. And so when you're, when you're not exercising that trust and when you're living a life in doubt of of God's goodness, because really that that's what it is. Um, then you're, you're looking around and you're getting distracted from the calling that God's put on your life. And yeah. um, what's frustrating, this is, I actually heard this. Um, I, I don't remember who I heard it from, but it's, it's truth of gospel. When you, the, the sin of coveting, mm-hmm. I remember thinking as a kid, like, why is that in the 12 commandments or 10 commandments? 12? <laughs> Who I added like, two commandments? I like to throw a couple extra in Come for on. good measure. You know what I mean? It's uh, <laughs> apocryphal. We adding commandments in this here? This is my extra. You know what I mean? Nick Smith's commandment. No. The Let's t- not forget <laughs> the extra two at the end of the commandments, everyone. <laughs> the 10 commandments. Um, it used to frustrate me. Like, that's a big deal. Like, just being like, oh, man, I want their stuff. Because, mm. you know, as a kid, as that a happens kid, that's a lot. that's what it feels like, yeah. Um. But in truth, when you're coveting, when you're looking and comparing yourself to other people and you're complaining and saying what I have is not good and what they have is better, mm. that is an accusation against God. Like what you're saying is, God, you, you didn't do wow. it right. Like you messed wow. up and, and you like you need to do better because you bless them in a way that's that's unjust and unfair. And I'm not getting what is rightfully due me. And so you're 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 like coming to God with an accusation. Um, whether you mean to or not, that that's really what you're doing because you're not resting in his provision. Mm -hmm. You're not trusting that he loves you. You're not trusting what he said, Mm. which is that he's going to do what is right by you. He's going to do what is right to bring his glory 
and your goodness, Mm -hmm. your good in that situation. Yeah, that's good. And like, and hearing that it might be like, Oh my gosh, like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't coming to this today to feel guilty about <laughs> Call me a wanting somebody else's truck. Like I was just looking at their <laughs> truck and I, I was admiring it. There's nothing wrong with admiring the blessings that other people have. Like, wow, God has been so good to you. Um, the hard part is when we do start to shift it into, but I deserve that. Yeah. You know, and all the things I've been through and all the tears I've sown. And you know, what's crazy is that those tears sown in the night, eventually like they will reap joy for you. Like, yeah. Weeping endures, yes, and hardship endures, but joy comes in the morning. Like joy right. comes when when the sun rises and we behold the glory of the sun. Like really, yeah. the S O N. And so I think that's, that, that's an important <laughs> thing to keep in mind for ourselves to keep ourselves in check. But there are like those practical things that we need to be able to have as believers to help us combat this. Because yeah. we can say all day long, you know, fix your eyes on Jesus. You know, continue to pursue Him. And but for some people. Those things don't make sense. Like when you're just approaching Christianity, like, oh, okay, so do I need a picture of Jesus <laughs> so that I see I him every morning? Look, in which picture am I looking exactly. at? Exactly. Some like, of them we know ain't historically well, some accurate. Some of them be a little off, but um, <laughs> no, but I think practically one of the things you can do is um, if, if you're going to compare, if, if we're going to have comparison, which is, is natural and normal for us as human beings, um, let's compare your progress um, or excuse me, compare yourself to previous versions of yourself. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. That's right. That's a comparison that can help inspire people. That in and of itself is a testimony and it drives and inspires and like brings about this new life and this excitement as opposed to, oh, wow, well, that's great that they got that and I didn't. Yeah. That's dead. Like comparison in that sense has killed any possibilities for you. Yeah. Whereas, oh my goodness, like just two weeks ago, I did this just, just recently I did this. Mm-hmm. I went back and I looked from the very first time I released a single and I looked at on the map, how many places that was played on the world map. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think there's one little dot <laughs> right there where I lived. Cause I was the only one playing it. And then I looked over the, like each year, I looked over a few months and it grew. And then I looked each year. And how those dots have started to spread and to where it like looks like the map is starting to get stained. Mm, And that so encouraged and inspired me. I could have looked at all of the plays of other artists that I admire and people that I know personally and been like, oh, wow, they're getting so many more plays or, oh, wow, I'm doing pretty well. I'm getting more plays than them. Yeah. But that wouldn't have been life giving. That's right. Instead, I had to look at where God had taken me from. And how he has, in spite of myself, Mm -hmm. how he has poured out his extravagant grace. I didn't deserve any of the little blips on that map. (laughs) But yet he, in his majestic, powerful grace, was like, girl, let's spread it like wildfire. And so I think that's an important tool that we have is set those goals based on your progress. That's good. I think um, one of the things that does when you do that is it it, it, um, not only gives you more trust in the Lord, Mm. um, but it also starts to build up your reputation with yourself. Like that you can trust yourself to accomplish things and that you don't have to look to other people to help you along the way or to, to validate you. Yeah. To validate you. We all need help. I'm not saying like you do it on your own, but I'm saying you're not seeking validation Mm -hmm. because you can Mm -hmm. validate yourself saying, listen, I know what I did. Mm -hmm. I know what I went through and I know what the Lord has done in my life. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that you can do, um, to, I guess, stay, keep yourself from being distracted with FOMO is if you're, if you're busy, um, you don't have time to worry about other people. So one of the things that I've done is I have a file on my, or a little, you know, when you group all your apps together, I think, I don't know what they're called, a file of apps. Um, <laughs> but your I, hand computer. <laughs> I have one of those on my f- uh, screen that has all the apps that I want to go to first before I go to mm. any social media. Yep. And so it's got like my, my Bible, it's got some uh, different language study things I'm doing. It's got um, an exercise tracker. It's got all these things that, will keep me busy yep. um, bettering myself yep. and, and investing in myself. And I, I, I want to do all of those things first mm-hmm. before I go to an, a site where I may be comparing myself to someone else's journey. Mm-hmm. I may be looking at someone else's highlight reel um, when I'm looking at my own bloopers. Like um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I messed up today, but look at them. They're working out. It's great. <laughs> so I want to do that. I want to busy myself so much with things that help me grow and help me to do my best yeah. that I don't have time. Yeah. To worry about other people. Yeah. And ultimately God deserves our best. That's right. And so why not? Why not use that time where you normally would be fretting over all of the things that they did better than you or got more of than you? 
why not use that time to be like, you know what? I'm going to learn a new language. Yeah. And here's the cool thing. Like if it, whether it's a hobby or it is something you can like, you know, compete in or join in with other people. I think it's great to have something that you enjoy doing Mm -hmm. that you can spend time investing in and even money investing in, um, that you don't actually gain any notoriety for. Yeah. Like I think about like, um, Jim Carrey, amazing actor, amazing comedian has a career as that is known for that has, has awards for that. He's also an incredibly talented painter and artist. Yeah, I saw that. I saw like, that. And um, who else? Um, Johnny Depp yeah, writes and, music and, and, sing, and paints. And paints. But yet you don't, you don't hear those stories. You don't like go yeah. to an art gallery. I'm going to get, I want to get the latest Jim Carrey. No, <laughs> you go to the movie theater. But that's something they enjoy, like these people enjoy doing that though they have notoriety in an area, um, this is something that, that feeds their soul. Yeah. And there's plenty of artists, plenty of, um, I mean, business people. A lot of people joke about like golf. Mm-hmm. And I still, I don't get it. Never been into but it, but hey, if you do people it. People that enjoy doing it to unwind or fishing yeah. or like people that make little figurines or sewing, or running like find or whatever. something that you enjoy doing that your life doesn't depend on. Like yeah. it's not, if you don't sell that or if you don't get recognized for that, it's not going to break the bank. You're not going to lose your house. That's what you need to help um, feed that. And, and little things. It doesn't have to be anything big. And that's where you can find joy comparing your journey to your own journey. Like, that's oh, right. man, when I first started, you know, doing clay modeling, I was terrible at it. But now look what I made. And it's yeah. it's all mine. It's just for me and God. Like, this is so fun. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, uh, one of the things I feel like I want to encourage anyone listening or watching in is that God wants you to enjoy life. Like, I think we can get so caught up in the, um, almost the woe is me. I have to serve. I have to give. And if, if I ever have any fun as a Christian, then I'm doing it wrong. Um, that's taught in some traditions. Yeah. yeah. And I, I want to free you from that. If you're from one of those traditions that that's, um, the telling joy you, of the Lord is our strength. That's right. You need to be <laughs> experiencing. I love the, the Jewish tradition of, of Sabbath, of being able to experience all the fullness and the goodness that God has for you and taking a break from toil, taking a break from stress, Mm -hmm. because in those moments you're able to celebrate a little touch of eternity in this moment. It's saying, listen, in spite of the way the world goes, Mm -hmm. I'm going to have fun because God Mm -hmm. is good and God loves me. Um, And you have to find ways to feed your soul. Uh, And we actually, we have an older episode um, and we'll put a link to it somewhere around here ish. I like doing this. Uh, we'll put a link up there. Uh, and if you're, if you're listening, we'll re-release it on, um, your podcast platform, but we have an episode on 10 ways to feed your soul. Yeah. And so please, 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 please this week, listen to that, watch that, um, do some of it to do something in order to, to grow in grace yeah. and to know that, uh, you're loved. Yes. Well, this has been the Nick Smith podcast. Mm-hmm. We hope this episode has connected you to living truth. Be, Be blessed. blessed.